Once work orders have been submitted for scheduling, you can run the scheduler to display the resulting planning. The scheduler will display all existing work orders that are scheduled but not completed, as well as work orders that have been newly submitted. To do so, you will use the production scheduler. You select the site which you want to open the planning. From here, you should have access to tabs that allow you to view or act on the scheduling. All new work orders submitted to the scheduler will be automatically assigned to the resource standby. This is a temporary stage before the scheduling and optimization done in the production scheduler. We can see on this line the operations of the work order that were just submitted to the scheduler and hence were not scheduled yet. Assignment of these operations on the production resources will occur when the production scheduler performs its scheduling process. We will run the scheduling process now. The scheduling will start on the planning start date defined in the production scheduler. In our example, we will use January 31st as the start date. This start date can be changed using the button Change Start Date. This is a typical action of the planner to begin the day, setting the start date. In our example, it is the 1st of February. You can see the red line moves accordingly. When we run the scheduling process, the operations previously on standby resource are automatically assigned on the work center planned in the work order in Sage X3. We have now a full view of the production scheduling including all existing and newly submitted work orders. We can view the operations either by using the resource Gantt chart tab to view all operations per work center or using the other tab work order Gantt chart. Of course both tabs display the exact same data but just in a different way. You can either sort the operations per work order as displayed in the current Gantt chart or display operations per work centers in the resource Gantt chart. After the automatic scheduling is done using the production scheduler algorithm, you can perform manual optimization actions. For instance, you can set a new fixed start date on a work order or on operations. First, Open the work order detail and select the operation you want to modify. Next, drag and drop the operation on a new date. A small orange triangle will appear to indicate that the start date has been manually changed. As the planner forced this new date, the scheduling process will not change. This information should appear in the indicator and detail panel on the right of the page. In the panel you can see the new fixed start date and time and that the tick box indicating the new date has been manually forced and not the result of automatic scheduling. In case of an error, it is possible to remove the fixed date by unticking the box. 
hence the operation is automatically scheduled on the original date. Filters are also available that can be applied to select specific operations. For example, if you need to schedule the work order number 18, you can use the advanced selection filter. Here, you can change the existing filter set on the release product code to use instead. Select the work order information to test the comparison operator and to restrict here the selection on the work order number 18. Click the OK button to apply the new filter. Please note that other than the selected work order, all other work orders are grayed out. To go further, you can use the focus button to only display the work order selected and to be able to work in detail on this work order. In this mode, you have access to all actions. You can force a new start date on the operation on this work order. You can also create alerts, messages, and tags. In the list, you can select pre-configured alerts, either using only the alert or using the alert combined with a comment. In this example, I select a major alert and I add an important information on the operation. A flag automatically appears. Very easily, you can add messages for errors, alerts, and check. One more time, you can add a comment. A new flag will appear on this operation. Tags are also used in a similar manner. Tag names can be customized. As well as the icon used to represent them. Here again, you can insert a comment. This icon will be displayed on the selected operation.